to C7. We're hoping to see T1. The intervertebral foramina are going to be open and also clearly seen. Cervical pedicles are well demonstrated, and the base of the skull not superimposed over C1 because of the lateral head rotation. Yes. I noticed one thing that I didn't <laughs> mention for this one that you always should have to do, just like in the lateral, you have to have them bring the shoulder down too, because sometimes. Well, you know, not for oblique, no, but for the but lateral. But even then, yes. sometimes it kind of covers it. Like I noticed. On, a, on oblique. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Good advice. I always try to bring it down. Just yeah. You guys hear that? So even when you're doing a blink, you want them to try to relax your shoulders. Because so, because meantime, hold their breath. Sometimes they'll go, and they'll kind of shrug their shoulders. Up. Yes. So that's actually a good point. When you're telling the patient to hold their breath, watch what they do with their shoulders. Okay. Because you're absolutely right. When you have the patient hold their breath, instead of them holding in, suspending it right there, they like to take a deep breath in. Um, which comes to point that. When you're doing a lateral or even an oblique, you may want to do it on not only suspended respiration, but maybe on expiration, mm -hmm. right? Is that the way you guys are doing it? On expiration to bring the shoulders down? We use sandbags, have the patient hold sandbags. Uh -huh. Or sandbags, okay. And another good point, you guys hear the, the thing about the sandbags? Here's a tip, don't have the patient hold the sandbags. Drop, don't drop on your foot. When they hold the sandbags, when they're gripping it, you're going to want to do this. If it's resting around the wrist without gripping it, it will bring the shoulders down. But if you're holding something, your tendency is to do this. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Sandbags should have a strap. So that strap, you're just going to hang around the wrist without them holding it. The moment they grip something, they tense up. All right. Good points, guys. On this one, too, and on top of the opening, we look for the teardrops of the spinous process to make mm -hmm. sure that they're, yes. that's the criteria you look for, too. And what is that teardrop? These guys right here. Make sure these line up. But what are these teardrops? Oh, what is it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, they just call them teardrops. Laterals. <laughs> 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 well, no, 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 you're right, because this, this is what? This is the lateral. It's yeah, a spinous so process, right? You've got the superior one, you've got yeah. the superior of the other, oh, so okay. that's your, yeah, that's your psychopathic joints. But they're best demonstrated in the lateral. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're looking for that alignment of mm -hmm. the teardrop. Okay. All right, lateral position, non trauma. Okay. Chin slightly forward because we're trying to get the jaw away from the spine. True lateral position, looking forward, 72 inch SID. Okay, central is going to be directed away. So it's always on the same place. Where is it going to be directed? C3, C4. Okay. It's going to be at the level C3, C4. Okay, 72 inches. Have them look forward. Right lateral, left lateral. What do you guys do? You guys doing the right lateral or left lateral? Left lateral. So left lateral, so they're facing this way. Okay, so left lateral. Get ready to shoot, have them take a breath, and blow it out. You're going to do it on expiration. Why are we doing it on expiration? We just talked about this. Drop the shoulder down. So, during your, when you make your exposure, you have them breathe out. And as they're breathing out, you also want to tell them to relax their shoulders and make like, and this, and this is what you might tell them is, try to reach for the floor. Okay. So breathe out, reach for the floor, and as they're doing that, make, make sure that they're not doing this, okay? So to stabilize them, what are you gonna have them do with their feet? Do you want them together, or do you want them slightly spread out? Slightly spread. Spread out, this is what's gonna give you stability. So not only are you spreading your legs sideways, it also helps if one foot is slightly in front of the other. So you're gonna spread their legs, and one foot slightly in front of the other is what helps them stabilize, okay? All right. C1 through C7 should be demonstrated. Should be, right? Because where does C7 lie? Right with the shoulders. That's what we have them do an expiration, shoulders down. We want to see not only C7, but what should we also be seeing? T1. T1. Because we want to see alignment all the way through. Not just C7, but we should, we should also see T1. So C1 through C7 is demonstrated. The rami of the mandible is not superimposed over C1, C2. That's why you have them 
put their chin forward a little bit. Okay, no rotation with zygopophyseal uh, joints demonstrated and aligned. Something wrong with this patient's neck? Really straight. It's too straight. Whiplash. Yeah, could be whiplash. But there is some some. Is it curved the wrong way? Yeah, there's, you're, you're missing the curve. It's too straight. It's supposed to curve like this. So there's like yeah. no curve. So yeah, it it's be, almost curving the opposite way. It should be, is that yeah. convex or, is this concave. convex or concave. Concave. concave? concave, okay. So there should be some concavity to the neck there, and there isn't. It's too straight, exactly. All right, lateral position in trauma. So again, most of the patients that you get to the ER are they going to have a neck brace? They usually have a neck brace on, right? So the very first thing you, that you do, doesn't matter what x-rays you have, if they're coming in with a collar, chest x-ray extremity, and they're coming in with a collar, the first thing that you ever should do is a C -spine. lateral C-spine. Are we going to remove the collar? No. Mm -hmm. Why not? Okay. It needs to be clear. What well, needs to be clear? OK, yeah. So if they come in with a collar, if they come in with sandbags, if they're coming in with Velcro, if they're coming in with tape, any type of immobilization device, you are not to remove it until you clear the lateral C-spine. Okay? Same concept of, uh, applies. Cross table. We're going to use a grid. Why do we want to use a grid? Greater than 10, 10 inches. centimeters. 10 so we're going to use a, a grid 10 to clean up. <laughs> oh, man, that's a big ass name. We're going to use a grid to clear, clean up the image. Be careful in how you place your grid. You want to go with the length of the patient. If you do it this way, grid cut off. Okay, you're going to get grid cut off. So the grid, the grid strips have to match the, the alignment of the beam. So we do it this way. Okay. Approximately 60 to 72 inches as well. I hope you guys are good in your technical factors in doing a C spine. What are you guys shooting? 75 kV, 80 kV? 80 yes. kV. Okay, about 80 kV. Mm -hmm. And what's your mass? 16, 20? Things like 18 shoots. Okay. Yeah. So when you when you have these cross tables, you're not using an AEC. You got to have. You better know your techniques. Okay. So you know your combination of kV and mass. Your average technique mm -hmm. is about 75, 80 kV. At about, and I say 16 to 20. You say 12. No, I say 18. You say 18. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So around that, around that realm. Okay. That's the average size patient. Now, what's the irony about trauma C spines? Are they your average size patients? No. <laughs> They're usually the big people. Okay. So again, when we do the lateral, take a deep breath in, blow it out. Make them like they're, say, reach for your toes, okay? What can also help, okay, because there's always this different nuances. What I've had done in the past is I have them stick their chest out because uh, having them stick their chest out brings the shoulders back, okay? This gives us better visualization of the body because we're looking at the body, vertebral body alignment, okay? So you can have them do this or reach for their toes. If they're unable to reach, you may have them have some kind of uh, traction in the form of a sheet. So they're going to hold one end of the sheet, the other end with the other hand, and then the sheet's going to wrap around their toes. And push into it. And they're going to push on their toes and have them pull the shoulders down. But again, the problem with that is that they're holding it, they're going to have a tendency to fight. Okay? So make sure that the shoulders are going down. Have you guys ever used, uh, has anyone been in the room and they're pulling the patient's shoulders down as you're taking that x-ray? Have you seen that yet? No. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. And if they ask you to do that, Hell no. you can't do that. Okay. No holding of the patient. All right, any questions here? So again, same thing, 72 inches, because we're trying to minimize uh, magnification due to the increased OID. We are looking for alignment of the vertebrae, okay? So in a good cross-table C-spine, we should see C1 all the way down to 
at least C7, T1. So we want to make sure this proper alignment all the way down to T1. Now, if the shoulders are in the way, what's the optional view? Swimmers. Mm -hmm. Swimmers. Okay, swimmers. So here's your swimmers, your cervical thoracic lateral. This is found trauma, right? Mm -hmm. We're still gonna do it at 72 inches. Lateral position, unaffected arm up, okay? Unaffected arm, I'm sorry, the side furthest away, you want to try to relax, okay? Now instead of centering at C4, we're gonna center a little bit lower. So central ray is gonna be at the level of T1. How do we find T1? Juggernaut. Or well, you know what the spinous process is, right? So right at, right at the spinous process around an area. Why are we centering lower? Okay. So we're looking lower, but remember your central ray. Your central ray at the middle is gonna be 100% intensity. All right, so we're gonna bring it down a little bit lower because it's gonna be more intense in the area that we wanna, we wanna image. So we're gonna go at the level of T1, which is one inches below the jugular notch, or you know where the prominence is, just center out the prominence. Okay, take a deep breath in, blow it out, hold it. Or, what's the other option? Are oh, yeah. we gonna have them suspend their breath? How do you guys do it? Are they suspending the breath? Are you guys doing orthostatic respiration? Are they doing breathing technique? No, suspending the breath. Okay, suspend it. Everybody's doing hold breath? Everybody's holding breath? Okay. When you guys start shooting x-rays on your own, this is just my advice. When you guys start shooting x-rays on your own, and you get, when you get a swimmers like this, do it with a breathing technique. Oh, for swimmers, yeah, for swimmers. For swimmers. There is a breathing yeah. technique. You guys yeah. are using swimmers. Oh. Yeah. We did well, one yesterday. I, I, I wasn't arguing because there are techs who do it, you know, with suspended respiration, but you can do breathing technique with a long exposure, long exposure time. time. Oh, yeah, mm. Right? Yeah, it was like click, 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 click. <laughs> yeah. So you get a beep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with that? Yeah, as long as the mass is lower. As long as the, I mean, the MA is lower. total MA stays the same. <laughs> Total mass is. So what is that called? You guys, I heard you guys talking about it earlier. Reciprocity. Reciprocity. <laughs> 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 reciprocity. Okay. All right. You can also use a three to five caudal angle. Okay, that also helps separate the shoulders. What I've also done. Okay, what I've also done is I've. Check this out. Slightly oblique. Okay. Just. Slightly. I'm not talking like this. <laughs> just slightly. Because we're trying to remove... That was cute, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to remove superposition. Damn. Can you erase that? No, that's going up, that's going up for sure, dude. You're going to get a lot of views. I'm going to get like a hundred more viewers now, dude. Make blue pen. one of those Snapchat things on my Facebook. Yeah. I'll save that one for sure. This just as high as you can get. As high as you can get. So you may have one of those bars that they can grab onto. Mm -hmm. yeah. Experiment. Yeah, whatever whatever they show you works best. Remember what I said in the past is that you as technologists, by the time you graduate, you are gonna be a compilation of all the different texts that you've worked with. And you take what works good for you and you get rid of ones that don't work for you. Because right, I'm a product of many texts that I've worked with. So yeah, that, that works, this works, to find out what works best for you. They all make sense. Okay. So C4 to T3. Why, why do we care about C1 to C3? It's already got it. It's already got it on the lateral, right? The regular lateral. So C4 to 3. T3. To 3, 3. <laughs> to T3 is going to be clearly demonstrated with no superposition of the uh, humeral heads. Okay? Vertebral rotation to a minimum with optimal exposure factor. So again, um, so everybody is using a breathing technique. Okay. All right, and then a couple of the uh, 
special projections, positions. Any questions about the positions that we just covered? All right, so we have hyperflexion and hyperextension laterals. Some of you guys have already done the Fuchs methods? Mm -hmm. They do. You guys do it? Okay, Fuchs. Uh, the opposite of Fuchs is the Judd. Then we have the wagging jaw. Anybody do the wagging jaw? Anybody hear the wagging jaw? I want to see it now. Though. You want to see it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is also known as the Otonello method. And then the, I don't even think we, I think I crossed this out. APX or vertebral arch pillar. Well, let me see if I still have that on there. All right, so hyperflexion and extension. The purpose of hyperflexion and hyperextension views, so we do both, because we do a compare and contrast or comparison. It's a functional study to demonstrate anterior superior vertebral mobility, frequently performed to rule out whiplash type of injuries or to follow up a spinal fusion surgery. Now again, we can't see whiplash, okay? But we're, what we're trying to see here is we're trying to see the mobility caused by that type of injury or strain through flexion and extension laterals, okay? So basically, again, what you're doing is you're lining up your patient at, uh, at a true lateral, and from there, it's saying here, stabilize, keep the shoulder stable, is when they're doing this, make sure that the shoulders aren't moving in your views. So shoulders are stable. All you're doing is bending the neck forward or backward. Central is at the level of what? What is it? C3, C3, C4. Get yeah, the Adam's apple. Okay? So this is a functional study. You don't do this. Okay? You want to rule out fracture first. Okay, so what the doctor is going to have you do, or mean to have you do, is you want to do a lateral first, just a regular lateral, lateral before you do these. Okay, especially if you're doing this after an injury. Okay. All right. Also done on expiration. Any questions here? Pretty simple, right? Okay. C1 through C7 is visualized. A little bit different here in the lateral, what we've done in the true lateral is we collimate it down to the area of the spine. But because of the flexion and extension, it's going to take up more area of your image receptor. So don't collimate too tightly because we don't want to cut anything off. Okay, so you still want to keep the width of your image receptor if it's a 10 by 12. If it's 14 by 17, you still want to collimate uh, to the area. Okay, C1 to C7 is visualized. Hyperflexion, uh, spinous process are going to be well demonstrated. Okay, they're going to be nice and open. Hyperextension, spinous process are going to be closer together. Okie dokes. Mm -hmm. Fuchs method. This is an alternate projection for the dance. This is only for the dance. We're not looking at the joint space between one and two. It's only for the dance, the odontoid. Do not perform until lateral or a CT spine has been cleared. Because look at the type of extension that is required to perform this procedure. Okay. So you want to make sure that it's been cleared before you have them do this exaggerated movement. The central ray is going to be inferior to the, the mandible. Proper position is you want to try to get the mental meal line as perpendicular to the image receptor as possible. If you can't, central ray and the MML has to match. Those two lines have to match. Okay. Same thing here too. Mental medial line as perpendicular to the image receptor as possible. If you can't, central ray has to match. This is the Fuchs, which is AP. Judd is the opposite. Central ray at the chin. Here, base of the skull. Okay? Questions? Fuchs and Judds. Fuchs and Judd. All right, bands demonstrated through the foramen magnum of what? The skull. The skull, okay. So the foramen magnum of the skull. All right, uh, so it should be projected through the foramen magnum. 
Uh, again, this is to just evaluate the dance. We're not going to see joint spaces. <coughs> you may see this, you may not. Okay, but this is to basically demonstrate the dance, plain and simple. Okay, we're not analyzing joint spaces. Okay. Is that the mandible on the bottom? This is the the mandible at the top. Oh, right? down here. Mandible at the top. Well, no, no, no. What's that just wing on the very right. bottom? Right here. Below that. A little, little bit below lower. That. That. Go down more? the white spot below that. The right here. Triangle wing. Yeah, yeah. That, all that stuff. This, whatever you call this part of the the, the Indian, the Indian, oh, okay. the Indian of the bone of the skull. Uh, Indian. <coughs> so all that is the occipital bone, then, or the uh, foramen magnum. This right here. Yes. This right here. Yes. Yes. You know, I, I wish I. I'm not gonna deal with this class for the next class. I'm gonna download the. Um, I, I need to buy the that uh, that program that I told you guys to get for your phone and app. Mm -hmm. Skeleton. Yeah, there's a program for the computer, but nobody wants to give me the money to do it. So I think I'm just gonna spend my own money and just upload it here. Because it's it's a lot better than that. It's a lot better than showing two-dimensional pictures. Did you guys, have you guys gotten that app? Mm -hmm. I use it. Did it help you a lot during the skull? Um, yeah, I use it yeah. a lot for when I'm studying the anatomy just yeah. to get a visualization yeah. of where You get a three-dimensional uh, yeah, image of, of that. So you, you as the x-ray tube, can see the perspective of what you're looking at in different positions of the anatomy. I'm telling you guys, it works, it helps. Okay. Holy There's shit. There's a wagon jaw. Like scary, dude. Because that's wagon what jaw. <laughs> so, <laughs> the wagging jaw, central rays perpendicular to the level of C4. Okay. <laughs> Why are we down here? I thought this was for the odontoid. No, it's for the. The wagging jaw is actually for the entire spine from C1 to C7. Remember in a true AP, you see only three to seven, and you're not seeing one and two. This will allow you to see from one all the way down to seven. So this blurs out. Doing, yeah, because in blurs a true jaw, axial, right? this is in the way. So we move the jaw, long, uh, long exposure time, motion, we blur out the jaw. Okay, and now you see something like this. So C1 through C7 should be clearly demonstrated. This is not a real good picture because you can only see C3 or C4. You actually should see all the way down to C7. Okay, you should actually be seeing it all the way down here. Okay, so the movement of the jaw will help you visualize, better visualize one and two, in addition to the other cervical vertebrae. Okay, so movement. You can also do, uh, you do a uh, long exposure time, of, I say long, like two or three seconds. That's it. All right. All right, what's wrong with this picture? Which is better, A or B? A. A is good, right? Mm -hmm. Odontoid is free and clear, and we can actually see the zygopophyseal joint between one and two. What's wrong with this one? Okay, so here's the odontoid right here. Occipital so what bone. Is this mass? The occipital across? bone. That's the back of your head. Okay. So if you're seeing the back of the head, the head's tilted too far back. Wait. Way too far back. Way too far back. If you're seeing teeth over that, then you are too forward. Way too forward. So the teeth in the back of the skull should be aligned and superimposed for a good open mouth. Okay. Same picture? Okay. <laughs> Identify the most obvious for people. Error on radiograph B. Okay, so this was this is the opposite now. So now we have the teeth. Too forward. So that's too far forward. Okay. AP axial. Okay. Identify the most obvious for people. Error on B. Okay, so the chin needs to be extended slightly, right? Mm -hmm. So it's either the head or the angulation. One of those two things are off. <coughs> Remember, the angulation has to match the at least the tilt of the head of approximately 15 degrees. 
So we're not seeing, we're only seeing, let me see, this is, this is two, one, seven, six, five, four. Can't even see three. What's wrong with this one? Identify the most people error on each of these well, A, the shoulders. With A, the shoulders are not dropped down. Far. Shoulders, okay, so we see one, two, three, four, five, six. We're not seeing seven. Okay, so this needs to be done again. Swimmers. Swimmers. Swimmers, okay. Over here. Stop one, listening. Two, three, four, you can five, see them. Six. Same thing going on here. But you can kind of see seven. Um, is this a cross table? Probably a cross table, right? Okay, that has artifact. So again, we're not seeing we're not seeing uh, seven, six, seven, and eight very well. Six, seven, and eight. <laughs> six, seven, and one. Yes. Six, seven, and one. All right. Do we? Do we? Does everybody agree? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Six, seven, and eight. Okay. Hopefully, uh, this is good. Good or not good? Not good. Yeah, you're not seeing the parameters, okay. Too over-rotated, huh? Or probably not an angulation. It might be rotated, but they probably forgot to do a, an angulation. Remember an oblique, it's 45 degree obliquity, but we also have an angulation. Same as the AP. Same as the AP, okay? Uh, what's wrong with this one? Oh, wow. this special trauma radiograph, but is the foreign body located in the posterior? Why is it? Yeah, Maybe it's a C-collar. No, we can, can see that there's bits and pieces of it here, surrounding in the area, so we've got the fragments of it. Oh, is it like a scratch? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bullet. It's a bullet. A bullet? Huh? Yeah. It's not right, exactly. It says it's a foreign body. Oh, it's the artifact, oh, it's a foreign body. Oh. Ah. Mm -hmm. Shot in the neck. Yeah. Cool. All right, we done.